Hello again, I'm Henry T. Welcome to the show that spells out inspiration with an exclamation point. We meet people all around the state of New Mexico and they come in and bring their fascinating stories about inspiration, success stories. How did they happen? Who inspired them? What inspired them? Rags to riches, bad health to good health, miracles happen. And by the way, speaking about that, I want your miracle. I want your inspirational story. Call me here at the TV station, KZQ Channel 32 at 884-8355. And we'll put your fascinating story on the air. Like we're going to put the fascinating story of Vince and his beautiful wife, Donna, on the air today. And what a fascinating story you guys have. And there you are smiling again. Mm-hmm. How are you, Vince? Very good, thank you. How are you? Donna, it's great to see you. Great to see you. Henry. You know, those smiles don't happen by accident. Vince, I met your wife in a shopping on Christmas. She's spending all your money probably, right? <laughs> Absolutely. But she was happy doing it. The Christmas <laughs> music's playing, and uh-huh. she's got a basket filled that high over the top. And it was just Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I said, I bet that lady has an inspirational story. And here you are today sitting with Henry T. at KZQ TV. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. What a bold thing to do, but I knew you guys had a story. And immediately she talks all about you mm-hmm. and your courageous days as a police officer. Mm-hmm. And she told about her happiness. And her sister's got a story that we'll hear soon as well. But you look happy, not by accident. Mm -hmm. Something has inspired that smile. Something has inspired you to be successful in what you've done and to be as happy as you are. Mm -hmm. Donna, let's start with you. Who inspired you to be successful? And what have you done that literally spells out success? Well, I was born and raised in Berlin. My parents, Dolores and Lalo Montano, were a huge inspiration. My mom was our biggest cheerleader. And, uh, you know, from, from day one, everything that we did, I'm the eldest of six, six children, uh, she was our cheerleader. She pushed us, she inspired us. She knew that, you know, we were going to grow and, and be bigger than, than my dad and my mom combined. And of course, as parents, we always want our, our children to be, you know, bigger and better and smarter and healthier and, you know, just better off than, than we are. So my parents were a huge inspiration growing up. Just had a supportive family, very supportive family. You went on to have a career Mm -hmm. filled with success. Yes. What did you do? Well, they pushed us to go to school for one. My, My parents were both high school graduates. And, uh, and we were some of the first grandchildren to actually go to college. Wow. And I think the, the education had a lot to do with it, a lot to, to growing up, a lot to experiencing other people, you know, from, from all over the United States and different countries. Uh, so that was a good opportunity in school. And I, I went into engineering, which at the time, uh, women in, in engineering was, you know, the percentage was very small. Hispanics in engineering, that was a very small, you know, um, segment. So I started off in, in engineering and uh, actually went on to computer science wow. after that. So uh, successful school career. And in between, I was a co-op student. Uh, I worked part-time for Mountain Bell at the time. Uh, in between my semesters and eventually got on to work with them. And so I've been with them now for 28 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. Courageous career as a police officer, athlete that Henry T. Mm -hmm. broadcast way back in the day. Who was president then? Was it Lincoln, (laughs) Jefferson, or Washington? I'm thinking Eisenhower a little more. (laughs) Hey, congratulations Mm -hmm. on your success as an athlete, student athlete, Later on, a police officer. Wow, you've had your fill of success. Who inspired you, Vince? I have to say my parents also. Uh, I grew up on the west side of Albuquerque. My dad was a building contractor, hardworking man. My mom worked at a bank. Um, Mm -hmm. What I learned from them was 
hard work and discipline goes a long, long ways. And I've tried to, and I think I've proven that in my success. And I'm, I'm not rich. I'm not. Uh, a very wealthy man, but I'm very fortunate to have a great family and be able to provide for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have achieved things that I thought I would never achieve. Mm -hmm. What uh, fundamentals did mom and dad show you that paved the way for you to overcome challenges? Well, for instance, when I was a young kid, me and my brother, I have two brothers, the discipline. Uh, at times it seemed extreme when I think about it, but we couldn't walk into a store and we'd have to have our hands in our pockets and not because we'd steal anything, but just, and we couldn't run around or anything like that. And if we allowed a, my mom or any other woman to open a door, pull out a chair for themselves, uh, we'd hear about it from my dad. Uh, it was always, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, to anybody, any adult. So just show respect for people mm -hmm. and, and hard work, what it would do and, and discipline. I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you, we, I took some whippings when I was a kid. By today's standards, uh, somebody would go to jail for it. However, I never took a beating I didn't deserve. <laughs> and, and it was, you know, it was discipline. Uh, and I learned a lot from that, a lot of hard work. Uh, learned that uh, the old adage, uh, if you're gonna be a dishwasher, you're gonna be the best dishwasher there is. And, uh, and from that, I've worked hard and, and taught my kids that it doesn't take a lot of notoriety. People will notice, you think they don't notice, but you just mm -hmm. do hard work and you're gonna get noticed. And, and that's kind of happened in my life. I'm really curious how the both of you met. Mm -hmm. I hear it through the grapevine, it's a fascinating story. <laughs> Donna, have your, have your share of the story immediately. Well, at the time I was a single mother raising my uh, 10 year old son. And at the time, computers were, were new. I, I actually worked in IT at, uh, at the time then, it was US West, and I worked on big mainframe computers, but PCs were you know, just something new that we weren't familiar about. And my son was learning about it in school. And through a, a mutual friend, I found out that uh, Vince needed help with his computer. And of course, I couldn't do anything, but I could take my son. And so... Okay, we're gonna be honest here, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> the, the mutual friend was, and when, I'm gonna say my ex-wife. Uh-huh. And they were friends, but we were already divorced. Oh, so, yeah. so there was no hanky-panky wow. going on, but she... But we happened to work together. They worked together, and I said, told my wife, I need somebody to help me with a, a computer. Your ex-wife. My ex-wife. <laughs> And she sent Don over, and the rest is history. My goodness. <laughs> so, yeah. Man, when is the book coming out? Uh -huh. Well, it, there's, yeah, it good. it's very interesting. It could Isn't be. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. That kind of shows you about peace mm -hmm. around you, maintaining that peace and respect for one another. Your past spouse mm -hmm. helping you, you helping her. Absolutely. And all of a sudden, you guys come together. Uh -huh. That's a bestseller, if you ask me. Oh, yeah. It was unique. <laughs> and then you come together and you realize the compatibility. Uh -huh. And then you start growing together. What was the catalyst for the growth of your happiness together? Well, you know, I, I think part of it is, you know, when you're young couples and you're paying bills and having children and trying to find jobs, I think there's just so much more pressure on a relationship. And when Vince and I met, you know, our children were already a little bit older. You know, Vince had two children, I had one, and we already were established in our jobs. We both had homes. So I think, you know, that initial, you know, super hard work, high pressure phase of our lives was already behind us. So I think that opened up just, you know, new opportunities for us to get together and, and grow. So I think that was probably a lot of it. Wow. What's your story? Why are you so happy, Vince? Well, obviously my wife makes me very happy. She's inspired me a lot to get to the point where I am today. Like I said, I'm in a place in my career, in my life that I never thought I would achieve. You know, I travel the world today doing mm -hmm. different things. And like I said, I'm, I'm just a homeboy from the West Side. <laughs> but uh, Donna inspires me, she pushes me, she encourages me. And uh, that's, that's what it takes. I mean, uh, we're complete opposites in that she's very social, as you probably saw when you met her at the, yeah. at the store. And <laughs> I'm, I'm not so social. <laughs> so she, she's, we're just 
opposites attract and yeah. uh, we're done very well together. Amen. We just shared before we came into the studio the family get together at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Family obviously is very important to the both of you mm -hmm. and your children and giving with that basket filled like this. But the atmosphere around Christmas, how special was it for you, Vince? Well, I, our children are what's most important to me. I mean, they mm -hmm. inspire me a lot. Uh, I try to teach them what I can. And uh, just being with them as much as we can is what, what I like to get. And then everybody else, sisters and brothers and moms and dads, it's just uh, icing on the cake. And so. Is she a good cook? Not as good as me, but you're the cook. I am the cook. Wow. I have my specialties. I I I help, but he's definitely the master when it what comes to putting stuff that's together. What so special, Donna? Well, I I don't want to admit this on on public television, but he has a mean red chili. Really? And I I I pretend like I compete can compete with mine, but his his chili no way. No way. is his red chili is amazing. My yeah. goodness. So it's no problem for you to get up and make breakfast for the family. Absolutely. Yes. Dinner. She's at work or she's coming into town and you know she's gonna arrive at five. Dinner's ready. Absolutely, I love it. Mm -hmm. And wow. And he's normally the one out of town. So then I have to fend for myself. And he's always worried that I'm going to, you know, skip a meal or lose an ounce or something. But it just doesn't seem to happen. <laughs> well, what I do before I leave, I'll leave it a week or two at a time, I have to make a big pot of beans and chili for before I go so she'll That's the eat. key. Because if I yeah. don't, she'll, she'll eat a can of corn. I'm like, no, you can't what? sustain on that. Here, have this. What if Henry he put in an order for pozole? Hey, absolutely. Oh. A week in advance. Absolutely. On the house. <laughs> no kidding? Yeah. With the red chili. Wow. With the red chili. <laughs> How exciting. Red chili That's trip. rare that uh, then you have those skills because mm -hmm. you don't run into too many retired police officers that like to carve wood, former mm -hmm. athlete who's going to go into the kitchen and they get even more creative. <laughs> yeah. That's rare. Well, that, that's another inspiration for my mom and dad. My dad loved it. My mom was a great cook, or is a great cook, and my dad loved to cook also wow. out in the mountains and all that, so that was inspired mm -hmm. Funding for today's programming has been provided in part by A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. Hi, my name is Aaron, and I am the owner of A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. I am an avid listener of Channel 32, and this is our brand, A&D Signature Series. A&D also provides repairs, new installations, evaporative to refrigerated conversions, and other services. A&D Heating and Air Conditioning, 505-489-9342. Thanks for supporting family programming. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Marty Sice, a local State Farm Insurance agent. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. <coughs> We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah! I love it here. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We're never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. Marty Size, 345-3431. Thank you for supporting Family Programming.
talk about a career as a police officer mm -hmm. and the preoccupation of saying, honey, I'm going to work, give me a hug. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts when you know your husband is going to venture out in this dangerous job? You know, I was always real confident about Vince going out because I knew his abilities. I knew his interaction with people. He has a fabulous ability to diffuse situations. So I knew that anything that was within his control, you know, he could handle. Um, there was one time where I, I was actually in Denver at the time. I lived in Denver for two years while we were dating. And I always called him when he got home. He got home, I think it was about five o'clock. And one day I called him and he didn't answer. And I started to panic. And I called his mom, I called everybody I knew. And I forgot you had to run an errand after work, but I gave him a piece of my mind at the time because I thought I was getting ready to call the hospital and figure out what was going on. And uh, so times like that is the only time I would worry uh, when I couldn't get a hold of him. But for the most part, you know, I was just, I was confident. And I knew things that, that were happening out there, but I knew that Vince had the tools and the training and the confidence, you know, to take care of situations. Why? take on that kind of responsibility? Why seek out that occupation? Knowing ahead of time what the dangers are, the training is intense, but you know what you're going into. What was the catalyst again to make you go into that direction, Vince? Well, I didn't grow up to want to be a police officer like you know, a lot of small kids might say, but uh, as I got older, uh, I experienced things. I had friends that were police officers that went on ride-alongs and I thought, mm -hmm. I can do this. Uh, the training at that time, I uh, went to the academy in 1983, was very intense. In fact, the police academy in Albuquerque was very highly rated throughout the country at that time. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some very good training. Uh, it was a very rewarding career. I knew what was in store. I knew it wasn't going to make millions. That wasn't a problem. Uh, you know, there's, I'm not going to say it was courageous or anything else. We just did a job. Everybody did a job. Uh, Today, it's a different world. My son's in the police academy right now. Uh, it's a different type of academy. I wish it was more like it was back then. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who don't understand the role of a police officer that have the opinion of what an officer should do. They just don't have a clue. And uh, it's, it's a tough job, but, uh, you know, I saw a lot of bad, but I saw a lot of good. Uh, Without getting too dramatic, was there a moment when it became very dangerous and you were concerned if you were going to get out of that alive, because when the light, when the sun goes down in big towns like Albuquerque, some dangerous people come out, and their intent is to hurt only. Were you ever in that kind of confrontation? Well, in, in Albuquerque, Henry, there's a lot of good people. I'm going to say that off the top. There's a lot of good people, but what a lot of people don't see. There's a lot of bad people in this town, and cops today and back then, on a daily basis, there's something going on. Uh, there were, I'm going to say, hundreds of occasions. I mean, I was had knives pulled on me. I've been punched. I've been kicked. Uh, I've had guns pulled on me. Uh, there was, I mean, there was all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. You just react to your training, and you do the right thing, and hopefully things turn out right. You know, afterward you think, wow, you know, that, that could have turned out bad. Luckily for me, it never did. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, like I said, you know, fights, knives, guns, you know, a lot of the time. <laughs> Donna, what should we, the public, when we look at a police officer, what should we respect? What should we appreciate about police officers? Because you're with one all of your life, and you know the ups and downs and all arounds regarding Vince's life and his challenges. What should we appreciate? Why should we go up to a police officer and say thank you for the job that you do? For me, the biggest thing is people need to understand that police officers are husbands, they're wives, they're children, you know, of, of, of parents. You know, they're human beings that are out there that are protecting you. That's their whole role is to protect you. They're not out there to go bust somebody's chops. They're not out there because they get a thrill from 
that seen people in distress. They're there because they're there to help. And my biggest distress now is the media. And it seems like the biggest part in how people are perceiving police officers today is the, the negative twist that the media has on it to sensa you know just to sensationalize and get numbers you know get viewers you know in in pointing fingers at police officers you know and so for me it's like appreciate that the police officers are human beings they're there to help you what would life be like in a big city like this without police officers anarchy wow they were <laughs> yeah Anarchy with an exclamation point. Yeah, I mean, you, there's got to be, and that's it's. I don't want to say it's going that way, but there's no respect. There's for for parents, for teachers, police officers, and you know the laws these days are, you know, I don't know. It's it's getting very hard out there. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Now let's go back to the children. What's the joy of having children? And uh, that puts a smile on both your faces immediately. Mm -hmm. They've been a joy to you. Yeah. And now they're off in their success stories. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's got to be fulfilling to your heart. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it is. And we can start from the, the oldest to the youngest. Um, Frank is 33 years old. Uh, he graduated from St. Pius. Wow. And... He's been involved in the alcohol industry from the sales side to the distribution side to bartending. And his success story is he opened up a local brewery uh, about a year and a half ago, Red Door Brewing. And so, you know, we've had uh, some trials and tribulations with opening up a new business, but all in all, that's what he's always wanted to do. And he's reached his dream in being able to do that. Amen. Mm -hmm. How do the children fulfill your frame of mind with happiness? No, oh, I just seen them grow and succeed. Uh, my daughter has graduated from college, uh, got her bachelor's degree, is now an assistant athletic director at a college in Kansas, working on her master's degree. Uh, my son about to graduate from the police academy. Uh, just seeing him grow and learn. You know, Frank mm -hmm. doing well. Uh, you just feel this, uh, you know, pride and hope for them. You know, and they're doing so well. And we also have a new son-in-law. Brittany married a young man that she met uh, in, when she was going to school in Arizona. Wow. And he's actually a head soccer coach at the university. So. Vince always kids him and says, so is, is Brittany your, your boss, being that she's the, she's athletic, the athletic director? director so. <laughs> I told, I told so. her to fire him and hire me. I'll go be the soccer wow. coach. How hard can it be? Kick the ball. <laughs> you guys are, you, you look so young. You have such mm -hmm. a young disposition, and your attitude is fun-filled. Mm -hmm. and, and that's contagious. With the same contagious feeling, Tell the audience out there, young couples, if there are two or three mandates about being happy, you first, Donna, what do you recommend for young couples out there? Uh, the biggest thing I recommend is, is communication. Uh, one of you has to be a communicator. In, in our, our relationship, Vince is the communicator. He opens up the doors for communication. And two, you have to move around. You know, you have to, you know, either get your pedometer and, and you know, walk a couple thousand steps a day. You have to do that just to feel good about yourself internally. And, and thirdly, I mean, you, you have to have hope. You know, you have to be able to love. You have to be able to open yourself and, and help people and allow yourself to be helped as well. What's your closing message? What's your I, recommendation? I think that you gotta have goals, mm -hmm. work towards those goals, realize that they can be achieved, mm -hmm. and then watch your, your children and your family grow and try and teach them that uh, they can achieve goals also. And stay healthy and stay, stay young up here. I mean, yes. Sometimes it hurts in the body, but up here, <laughs> stay young. <laughs> Vince, you're in great shape, you're an athlete, former basketball player mm -hmm. for Fred Romero, Fred Romero, a friend of mine. I was a referee 
And I was throwing technical fouls on Fred Romero. <laughs> he got a few. And he yeah. deserved every oh, one of them. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. <laughs> but you're in great shape. One of these days, you and I have got some brand new shoes. All right. Brand new ball. We'll find a hoop in your backyard. All right. There let's do go. it. One on one to 20. What do you think? How about 10. <laughs> 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 but we'll have that as a goal to anybody. Okay. If we hit 10, we had enough, we'll call it 10. Only one problem. Yes, sir. Which hand do I tie behind uh, my back? Oh, <laughs> good one. Okay, you, your right hand and my left leg. <laughs> <laughs> what a joy to have met you both. Thank you. And to be in here today to share your very happy, inspirational story with New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, and a little bit of Texas. Oh, Thank yeah. you, Vince. Thank you, sir. Very much. Appreciate it. Wow. What Thank a pleasure, you. Tom. Man, and to all those officers out there, what do you say to them? They're putting their life on the line every day as we wrap it up. I say do the right thing, rely on your training, and you'll be all right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you again. Thank you, Henry. I told you they had a story. Man, I feel like running in place, shadow boxing, all of that. You heard that story right here on KZQ Channel 32, and we'll see you again tomorrow morning. you got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907-4523, or email originalgameface at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today, right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here be inspired with Henry T. 8 o'clock on KZQ Channel 32. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming.